Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence. I'm actually really excited for this video because um, it has a lot to do with, uh, with what I've been studying for seven years, which is uh, astral projection. I've been studying like little pieces of different uh, magic types here and there, but one I have definitely been working with is astral magic. Um, for those of you who uh, don't really have a lot of information on astral, what it is, uh, the astral is another name for the spirit world, and astral projection is an ability where someone can project their soul um, to go into the spirit realm while still being alive, which means you can talk to um, spirits, you can travel back in time to visit different eras, you could learn from uh, angels and teachers alike, uh, different spirits and sorcerers. So there's a lot you can do. I have been studying this for a long time, and it's only recently that I've been trying a different method that has really worked. It has been incredible and actually I have this to prove it. Now, for a while, I was keeping a dream journal, but I've stopped doing that because um, my dreams, you know, I've been really just kind of lacking on that, so I've only been writing down my meditations. And uh, it has been full of such great information. So wonderful. And, uh, so before we, uh, begin the technique to enter the astral and how to go about that, I am going to, um, give you a little more information. So using, um, just, uh, regular research, and also a mixture of meditation and astral projection, I was able to narrow down how many past lives I've had. I don't believe I have all of them completely down, but I, I definitely have at least these ones listed. So, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Ancient Phrygia, which was uh, in Asia Minor, uh, modern-day Turkey, so it, it no longer exists. It, it, it's what eventually became Persia. So, uh, Ancient Rome, um, Arthurian lore. I believe um, you know uh, everything that happened in the Arthurian lore was real. I believe. Um, now, I don't know this for certain, but I, I feel a connection to uh, the character we call Merlin. So I still have much more research to be done on that. Um, Celtic or Gaelic Irish and or Druids. Uh, Babylonia and ancient Sumer. Uh, the Golden Age of Pirates. So those are the um, past lives that I have narrowed down. And I've been writing down everything. I'm going to um, read to you what I have on my notebook. Uh, and this isn't like a grimoire or a book of shadows. I can share this with you, no problem. And it will give you an idea about what you might expect from the astral. <clears throat> So, uh, meditated, I traveled to the Astral Garden, which I will teach you how to get there. I removed all of my negative energy and walked towards a golden gate. I called upon my guardian angel, Saint Raphael, and a young looking man with beautiful blonde hair and a nice smile came. I asked him to take me to the Library of Alexandria, and um, 
We flew across time, and within seconds we were there. I was in a huge lobby with a huge statue. Shelves of scrolls were piled up along the walls. There was a librarian who I asked for help in locating scrolls on magic. He led me to a huge shelf filled with hundreds of scrolls. Though I was unable to read any of them, so I went back to the garden and St. Raphael told me I was not ready to learn them. I asked if I would be ready anytime soon and he said he couldn't say. Uh, apparently that is a running theme in the astral. If you're not ready to learn something, you won't until you're ready. <clears throat> Which kind of sucks because there was so much information yet when I, when I tried to open them up, it was almost like on TV when they censor something and there was like a blur bubble. It was like a blur bubble was on whatever was written on the scroll. And I was like, damn. Uh, the next one. I meditated, was going to visit a temple once I left the garden, but I didn't. Instead, I performed a rune spell involving the goddess Styx and was transported to her underworld. The place was huge and dark. I could see the stars, which had a state similar to water, on the ceiling. The goddess Styx rose up from the waters, towering over me. She wore a black dress, had gray-blue skin, and uh, blue spider-like hair. Her eyes were orbs of blue pulsating light. She spoke to me through the mind, through telepathy. Styx told me she admired my faith in her and wanted me to make a spell involving her and her children and her family. Styx conjuring spell... Aha. Uh -huh. Her advice for me was to stay strong and to call upon her if my mental health started to slip. I dipped my spirit into her sacred river and received her blessings of invulnerability. For those of you who don't know, uh, Styx is a primordial goddess in ancient Greece. She was uh, one of the powerful Titan goddesses to um, help the Olympians against the Titan gods in the Clash of the Titans. She is the goddess of unbreakable oaths and also the river Styx. Uh, bathing in her waters is what Achilles did and that's why he was invulnerable. So she let me do the same with my spirit giving me her energy and her family is incredibly strong Kratos strength Bia power uh, Zealous is rivalry Nikki is victory and her husband Pallas the god of warfare so she asked me uh, she actually gave to me a formula for a rune spell involving her family and it works incredibly well <clears throat> Alright, the next one. Started in the Astral Garden, I cast a light rune spell, and it worked. It was so powerful, I was blinded. Next, I asked Saint Raphael to make me go to the temple to learn magic. I arrived at an ancient temple, and a woman brought me in and told me that I was not ready, which I was like, what? I'm not ready? So I then traveled to a grassy plain where I set up a fortress to test my power. In the, uh, the astral is uh, similar to um, if you were to play something out in your imagination. If you want something to appear, it will. If you want to be anywhere, you can just imagine yourself there and all of a sudden you're there. And um, it was incredible. This fortress was huge and strong. <clears throat> I tested my energy against one of the fortress walls, which broke a hole in the brick. Then I cast a Marduk conjuring spell. Marduk is the ancient Sumerian god and ancient hero of Mesopotamia. Uh, he defeated the ancient uh, evil goddess Tiamat. 
and uh, it took me to a higher plane into the astral realm. In a place with steep canyons, Marduk was so powerful and tall. He was happy to see me, told me I used his power many centuries ago as a young man until my death. I asked him if he knew Anu, or the supreme god of the heavens in Mesopotamia, and he said yes, it was his father which Anu is also said to be the father of the gods, so go figure. He also told me to watch out for the good of others and to protect people. I was given a gold necklace with a snake on it to vanquish evil. Obviously in a spiritual sense. <clears throat> All right, the next one. Entered the Astral Garden. I performed the light spell again, but was able to control it and where the light went. I then performed a zombie conjuring spell. Ooh, I'm going to teach you that later down the line. Instead of one, there was two. And they understood my commands and I had complete control over both. Believe me, guys, the astral is going to be your home base once you learn how to use it properly. I'm just sharing some of uh, my experiences in the astral. Next one. Entered the astral garden, performed the new rune spell, and discovered an empowerment attack spell. I was able to create powerful spells against foes. I also conjured the zombies again for practice, and then ended the meditation. Next one. Meditated. I failed to perform a complex rune spell, and then studied at the temple with the teacher. The teacher told me I had great talent and power and potential. A vast knowledge of magic, though all of my past lives, through all of them. She tested me on force, and I repelled her spell. Then I caught her while she... Oh, yeah. Caught her spell as she sent it towards me. Uh, I need to get better handwriting. Whew. The last test, she had me attack her. And uh, I remember she blocked the spell instantly. She said she was proud and sent me back to the garden. Next one. Meditated. Finally performed the nine point spell. It empowered me. It took me to a strange place full of magic. Then I performed it a second time, and I traveled through space and time to a strange castle where I was to train my magic. I fought against a winged woman and defeated her. My instructor was not defeated. I couldn't defeat him before I eventually... I was forced to end the meditation due to a distraction... Which, unfortunately, that was the case. Alright. Um, oh, this one is where I realized one of my past lives, and this was recent. Meditated. Confirmed that I was killed in the Battle of Alia. Now, the Battle of Alia was fought many centuries ago, during the era of BC, I believe. Uh, from the uh, Gaelic people against, uh, I believe it was the Romans, but I can't remember... Um, I believe I also originated from the, uh, ancient Mesopotamian city of Sumer, one of the oldest known civilizations. We'll need to conduct further research. Ah, yes, and, um, this one was where I got a lot more detail about one of my past lives, um, including my death in ancient Mesopotamia. I went back to Mesopotamia 490 to 492 BC. I was an acolyte of the ancient religion killed by lions outside the city of Sumeria. The next life was Thera in Greece, maybe. Because I had a vision that I was on the ancient island of Thera. But um, 
it, it ended there, and uh, I haven't really been writing down the rest of my meditation. In fact, I can't remember what was the last time I meditated. Um, but that gives you an idea of how much information you can uncover about yourself and your past lives through meditation. It's also a great way to practice magic. A much better way than just doing it on the physical plane. Now, what is this astral garden that I, I told you guys about? The astral garden is just one of many locations that you can choose to go to during your astral meditations. Uh, you can pick anywhere you want. You can pick a temple, a castle, uh, a grassy field in the middle of an ocean, a garden, um, a mountain peak, a canyon, a desert. You can pick anywhere you want to go where, as long as you feel comfortable. But the Astral Garden is what I chose. It was uh, an example from the book A Witch's Travel Guide to Astral Realms by DJ Conway. Uh, a very good book and a very good technique. Now, I know there's a lot of misconceptions about astral projection, uh, fears you may have. Um, so I'm here to address those um, concerns now before we start the technique. You will not lose your soul. The uh, connection between your body and your soul is unable to be severed by a spirit. Um... An evil spirit is not going to come and claim your body or trap your soul, so um, that is not possible. And um, there is no pain involved, no risk. So everything should be fine. Um, astral projection um, is... Um, there's a lot of people who enter the astral realm through sleep. It's something that usually comes automatically to them, and if not, it takes a lot of practice in order to do it while sleep. It took me a long time before I had any uh, experience, and therefore, um, all of the experiences I did have during sleep, I was not able to control, and um, they were very short. Like one in which I wanted to go to Greece, and I did. I, I saw myself flying across the ocean and onto the white sandy beaches of Naxos in Greece. And it was so beautiful. The sun was setting on the ocean and the waves were just rolling back and forth. Oh, it was paradise. <clears throat> but my experiences through sleep are minimal. In fact, the at least to me doing this while you're sleeping is not the best way the best way is through meditation now I, I understand that a lot of people have um trouble meditating and i did too in fact there's not a lot of times when i can do it but occasionally i will and it is amazing so join me on this meditative journey all right, so what you're you're gonna want to do a lot of preparation for this. Number one, wear comfortable clothing, things that are loose. Um, if you're in a place with complete privacy, hell, you can even do it naked. You know, it's if it's your place, who's gonna know? Um, usually, I just I wear my robe. That's what I do. Uh, it's very comfortable, very loose fitting, and it feels great. You're going to want to um, make sure all distractions are limited. So turn off your phone. Make sure that it it's ringing won't bother you. Make sure you're not going to get disturbed by anyone in the house. So try to pick a place with some privacy. You're going to want to turn off all electronics, uh, TV, radio, uh, what have you. Uh, with the exception of lighting one or two candles. Just be very careful because you're going to be unconscious through uh, this meditation. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't burn down the house in the process. So just make sure you, that you have them in a safe place. 
But yes, you can have um, some candles burning. I tend to like to make the room dark because sunlight is distracting. So you can either do it at night or at least um, cover up the windows with curtains or whatever. I always do it at night before I go to bed. And what I do is, um, I don't light candles, but I turn off the, uh, the lights and I turn my fan on because the fan actually does help me focus. It feels really nice. Um, I don't have to worry about getting a little chilled because I have my robe on. In fact, sometimes I'll wrap myself in, uh, some blankets if I do feel cold. Um, you can either do this in a comfortable chair or like I'm doing right now, put some, uh, some very fluffy pillows, uh, against your back. In fact, if you have pillows like these, oh, these are wonderful. They're expensive, but totally worth it. My sister got these at Target and I bought them off her. If you put them in the back, they make excellent, um, support for your back case it's sore from work or whatever um so you can either do this sitting in a chair or um leaning against something on your bed um i wouldn't suggest crossing your uh your legs for this so just make sure your legs are like out like this so here you can be leaning if you're choosing to do it on the bed i would not lie down as if you were going to sleep because that will make you sleep so you're going to want to do this at least sitting up in a position where if you do go unconscious you will be fine um same thing where if you were sitting in a chair you're going to want to make sure that you're leaning against the chair but in case your body goes limp it will be able to catch you you're not going to fall out of the chair so make sure you relax uh, if you were to go on the bed, I would make sure you're probably in the center of the bed, not hanging off. Cause you know, say, you know, you're, you're meditating and all of a sudden you go, you know, limp and all of a sudden your body goes like, Whoa. So not only will that hurt, but it also interrupt the meditation, which is a big no, no. What will happen if it's interrupted? It's just, it's hard to go back once you've been interrupted. So, um, uh, make sure that you take all precautions necessary. Um, there was a time when um, I just, uh, I had one little pillow behind my back and it, I was like this and during my meditation, eventually it got so deep into the meditation that I went like this and I hit my head on the wall. So, um, and I couldn't stop myself because I was in the middle of meditation. So it was like really, I went kind of like down a rabbit hole mentally. So just be very, very cautious. Make sure you're comfortable, but make sure that you're also able to uh, be safe, be safe. All right, so now that we got the precautions out of the way, all right, so do what you need to do to get comfortable. Um, you can put on some soft music uh, binaural beats, sound effects, like maybe running water or maybe, uh, fire, bonfire crackle, you know, stuff like that is the exception. Um, just make sure it's on a loop. And, um, so if I were to do this, you know, once all my precautions are in place, I shut off the lights, I turn on my fan, I close my eyes. And I take deep breaths. I'm like, hold it for 10 seconds. And I'll do that like three or four times just to ease the tension of my body. Now, what I've learned is you don't want to spend too long preparing your body because that will make your body tense up just waiting for something to happen. And therefore, that will interrupt the meditation. Uh, also, um, you're going to want to make sure your mind's right before you enter the meditation. Um, expecting something to happen is the surefire way to make sure it doesn't happen. So if you are a person who has high expectations 
for like what astral projection is supposed to be like it's not going to be a good experience you might not even have one i've made that mistake when i first started learning about this i was young girl and I was inexperienced and I was so, I was getting frustrated that I wasn't meditating in my, like, I wasn't astral projecting in my sleep. And I'm like, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I can't do this. But no, that technique just wasn't working for me. This does. And um, so basically go into the meditation knowing nothing, expecting nothing. Whatever happens let it happen. Just, uh, if you meet anyone and they say anything, make sure to remember what they say. Uh, if anything, make sure to, um, record mentally anything that happens. Oh yes. And before I forget, before you go into the meditation, make sure you have a notebook handy because you're going to want to write these down, write down the date, Write down exactly what happened, everything you can remember. Don't worry about spelling, just write down what you can remember. And um, actually, according to DJ Conway, she also says it's also a good idea to write down what you've been feeling around that time that might, you know, cause a certain experience to happen. I don't do that, but if you guys want to do it, feel free. <clears throat> okay, so once you've taken your deep breaths, just relax. In your mind's eye, visualize an astral garden. Now, what does an astral garden look like? Well, first we're going to lay out what does the ground look like. Well, it's a grassy field, of course. Fields of grass... Now, is the grass light green or dark green? Does the grass really look healthy? Is there even any grass? Or is it just soil? Okay. Now, we're going to start adding some plants. Special kind of flowers. They're going to pop up everywhere. All kinds of flowers. Dandelions. Cotton dandelions, tulips, daisies, tiger lilies, roses, violets, daffodils. Oh, don't they look beautiful? And they're so real, you can smell them. Mm, you can smell them. Now, what else is in your garden? Are there hedges? Are there those bushes that are in the shapes of animals? Topiary? Um, is there a fountain? Um, let's see. Are, are there vegetables growing in the garden? Are there bees? Birds? What else? Are there squirrels? Now things you're definitely going to want to add is a cobblestone path around the huge garden. And the path is going to lead to a few places. Number one, it's going to lead you to a huge gazebo area. And it's going to be very, very beautiful. Make it be painted any color you like and as big as you like. <clears throat> In the center of this gazebo is going to be an altar. This altar can have anything you want on it, depending on your spiritual path. To me, it has a crystal, quartz. Uh, it's got burning incense. It's got um, lavender oil. Ooh, and I can smell the lavender. Ooh, it's already anointed on the stone altar. Um, I have an, an athame. Um, oh, there's burning sage, too. Uh, and there's uh, catnip and 
sage, rubbed sage, sprinkled all over the altar. Nice. Now, you're, uh, you're going to feel yourself slowly transferring yourself from this reality to that one. So anytime you move, you're going to feel yourself moving here in the garden. Now, as you turn around, there's going to be an old cobblestone well. You're going to go to the well, but you're not going to look into it. What you're going to do is you're going to hold out your hands and you're going to take anything that's bothering you, any negativity, anything going on in your life that's going to make you stressed out, sad, angry, uh, something that maybe hurts you mentally or physically. You're going to ball that up into this cyball of just dark, awful energy and you're going to throw it down the well and to make sure it doesn't pop up, you're either going to put a lid on it or you're going to imagine a toilet uh, flusher and just flush them down. Now that your spirit energy is clear of any and all negativity, now you're ready to um, explore the astral. Now you are going to walk over past the well and there's going to be a huge golden gate and you can't see too far uh, in the distance of what's beyond the gate, but you know it leads somewhere bigger and better. You call upon your guardian angel. If you don't know your guardian angel by name, it's okay. Just say, I wish for my guardian angel to be present. And you can say it out loud. If you say it out loud, it, it, I hear it's better for them to hear you. But you can also say it telepathically, if you wish. And normally they will come and you can see them. They will ask you, is there anything I can help you with? And remember to be polite because these are people too. Ask them to go anywhere you want. Ask them to visit the acoustic records. The acoustic records are a spiritual library, which has everything to do with not only your past lives, but everyone's. Now, when you go there, be sure to look at your own. And your guardian angel is going to make sure you only look into your own. So don't be a snoop on anyone else unless you feel it's necessary. You're going to see this book in front of this long table. You're going to open the book and there's going to be pictures. What does the first picture look like? If you turn the pages, you might not be able to see anything else with clear detail. But what does the first one say? Are there any words that pop out? Is there a date that pops out? What does the picture look like? Does it look old? Most likely it will since it is your past life. If you wish to explore that certain uh, era, if you can, on the uh, cover of the book, there is going to be a glass square. It's going to look like a magnifying glass that's just square. It's made out of uh, glass or crystal. And you're going to put it over the picture. And all of a sudden, it's going to start playing out like a movie in front of you. Can't you see it? When I did this, I found myself at the Battle of Alia. I remember the skies were incredibly cloudy. There was a lot of fighting. Every It was just chaos all around. I was wearing almost like gladiator armor. I was wearing a lot of armor. And I was, you know, just cutting down any man that stepped in my path. Uh, and then one guy caught me off guard and he impaled me with a spear. Now, sometimes, depending on how deep the meditation is, sometimes these experiences will feel real. You might actually feel the pain that you felt. You might feel um, the feelings that were going through your head, um, the emotions, so they can get really real. If you feel anything like that, may, remember to write it down. That is an important detail. 
I didn't really feel pain, but I felt a pressure in my abdomen when this happened. Exactly. It was like right below my heart that he pierced. So I knew I died then, but I wasn't able to see my entire life. I only saw my death. And uh, I did my research to find out when the Battle of Alia took place and what happened, but uh, names and dates, you know, are kind of lost on that, seeing as how old it was in, like, 290 B.C. Um, but you are gonna, definitely going to see something different. Uh, so just remember to write down your experience. When you're done, put the crystal back. Close the book. Ask for your guardian angel to take you back to the garden. You'll find yourself back at the garden. The gates will close behind you. Now, if you are ready to end the meditation, just say, I want to go back to my body and think about your body and feel your energy transferring back into your body and all of a sudden you'll start to feel real. Make sure you don't move too quickly when you just come out of the meditation because, you know, your body is just getting used to getting your spirit back. So what I do is like I slowly like move my arms and I move my hands and I slowly move my legs and I slowly, you know, move because it can cause like a sort of head rush. Um, maybe even feel a bit of fatigue or dizziness. So depending on how deep you go into um, the meditation. So that is just a prime example of what a meditation could be like. You might experience something different. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to go to the Astral Garden. You can choose anywhere. Um, astral Projection is incredible. And I will definitely teach you more about this in uh, videos to come. And I'm going to show you different things that I do and different practices. Oh, it's going to be so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions for me, put them down in the comment section down below. If you have any experiences in the astral, I want to hear from you guys. And I'm sure other people who come across this video want to as well. Um, feel free to subscribe to my channel and share this video with as many people as you feel may be interested in the subject or people who feel like they're kind of flailing on their spiritual path. Maybe I can be the one to help. Thank you guys so much. May your astral projections be safe and may your souls be cleansed. Thank you so much.